Hello, I'm Atubo Dr. Thank God. Today is Friday. Praise God. Woo! Listen, let's, let's just go in straight. Father, we bless you today. I declare every body is removed, even the body of ignorance. And every skill that have blinded the eyes of anyone or blinded their understanding right now, it's falling off. And men's eyes are open to see and hear the truth. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because you are making this possible by speaking to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. I read something to you yesterday from 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 46. How be that which was first, that was not first, which, was, which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. And I said, so is it is with every prophecy fulfillment. There are always two sides of the prophecy. There is the natural one which always comes first. And then there is the spiritual one. Now the problem with the spiritual one is many times we stop at the natural one and then we don't get to the spiritual one. We rejoice for the physical manifestation of, of the natural prophecy. And then we don't get into the real thing that God was talking about. So yesterday I gave you two examples. I told you about Adam, when God created Adam. He said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. But Adam was not in the image and likeness of God. See, because Adam was flesh. But God is a spirit. And then also I talked to you about Abraham. God promised him a land. Now we're going to continue from Abraham today. I said, I told you yesterday, God promised Abraham two things. So I told you about the land. Secondly, God promised Abraham his son. And you know the story. And we, you know, he promised him his son. And then Isaac was born. So now Isaac was the natural fulfillment of the prophecy. But Isaac was not the fullness or the full fulfillment of the prophecy. Now what's the fullness of the prophecy? Christ. See? Because because he told us in Galatians, he says, he, 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 he made a promise to Abraham and to his seed. And then he says, he didn't say seeds as of many, but he says seed. And he, he confirmed that that seed is Christ. So the son that God promised Abraham was not really Isaac. It was Christ. Are you getting this now? So Abraham got Isaac. Now that's why when God told Abraham, hey, go and offer this son Isaac to me, he knew that there was something beyond Isaac. He knew. Now, now don't take Abraham to just be one man that was just there and God to tell him. Abraham was deep. He was deep in spiritual things. Abraham communed with the Lord. Abraham had fellowship with God. He was taught of the Lord. So he knew stuff. Not many things Abraham knows are not written for us to know. But you check his walk with God. You will know this man understood some things. So he knew that the seed was beyond Isaac. And he had an understanding what Jesus said that except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. He knew. So when he had Isaac, the same way when he walked on that land, he was still looking for something beyond that physical land. And the Bible says he saw it. The same way he had Isaac, yes. He was rejoicing in Isaac, yes. But he knew that there was something more. This is, not, this is not how God ends. And so God comes one day and says, offer him up. said, all right. Mm. And I told you this before. While he was going, taking Isaac to that mountain, he contemplated, it was a three days journey. He contemplated on this and came to that conclusion that, look, if Isaac dies, then God will raise him up. And who's God going to raise up? God is going to raise up the Christ. He knew it. So with confidence, he took Isaac and he was going, he was ready to kill Isaac. Not because he was wicked to Isaac, not because he is a killer, but because he, he had seen that there is a prophecy that needs to be fulfilled. And I have this one now. And if this one dies, then the real one will come out from him. But you know, God stopped him. Why? 
because it was not yet time. But when Jesus came, that's why Jesus had to be crucified. The Bible says it was God who slew Jesus. Book of Isaiah chapter 53. It was God who slew Jesus. Praise God. So, so you see, Abraham was promised a son, but there were two sons, the natural one and the spiritual one. See, Because Abraham believed he received both. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, everything God has spoken, the same thing. You know, God told Israel, he will give them a king. And you think that king was David. David was the natural fulfillment of that prophecy. Yet, Jesus was the, was the real, the full fulfillment of that prophecy. He is their real king. Praise <laughs> God. Yeah. Praise God. Now, now, the same thing with everything God has promised you. Listen to me. If God comes to you and says, son, I will bless you tomorrow. And then you say, wow, thank you, Lord. I receive your word. I receive. Maybe you're jobless. And God comes and says, I will give you a job tomorrow. Woo, praise God, the Lord. Guess what, brethren? God spoke to me. He, he walked into my bed. Oh, I received a vision. I had a conversation with God. I had an encounter with God. Whatever means. Or a word of prophecy came to me and said, this week, he will open a door for a job. And then, literally, you got, a, you got a call that week and say, hey, I used to say, so, yeah, I have your CV before me and I think we're considering you for the job. Will you be willing to take it? He said, yeah, I mean, uh, when can you start? Oh, I, I can start tomorrow. Oh, good. Um, okay, this is your package. Wonderful package. He said, whoa, guess what? God spoke to me that he'll give me a job and that same week, I got a call from this organization, very good organization and this is my package. Wonder, God, you're faithful. God, you're faithful. Yes! But that is not the fulfillment yet. That is the natural one. Take your eyes off that natural one and set it for the real job that God was talking about. Say, how do I do that? Yes, yes. You, you receive it and act like Abraham. That's why I'm giving you all this knowledge. Because the scripture says, true knowledge, the just is delivered into their inheritance. See, true knowledge. You need to get into your real inheritance. Stop rejoicing at the first stage of the prophecy fulfillment. There is more. There is more. So don't, don't sit there and say, wow, man, God spoke to me. And see what, there is more, brothers and sisters. There is more. You receive that job, thank you, Lord. And then you get into that organization, and then you're wondering in your spirit, Lord, I'm here now. What's the real thing? What's the real deal, Lord? I'm ready. I'm ready. I know your word is beyond this physical things. I mean, think about it. Your father is spiritual. How do you think his blessings will be limited to physical things? You will see the physical things, but you don't stay there. You don't set your mind on them. That's why you remember Jesus. He, you know, oh, thank you, Lord. God fed the children of Israel with manna for 40 years. And the Bible says, the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 8 that God was tempting them. He was trying them to see what was in their hearts. So what did he do? He gave them manna. Now, manna was a spiritual food. What, what I mean, manna came from heaven, yet it was a physical food that they ate. You see? So you eat it, you know when you're satisfied, and then you say, okay, I'm not eating again. So it was a physical food, but it came from heaven, came from the spirit. But guess what? Jesus comes and says, yes, you know, because they told Jesus, show us a sign. Our fathers ate manna. And Jesus said, yes, your father ate manna, but you're mistaken. That was not the real bread from heaven. So the manna that they, they felt, man, what a miracle. That was not the real bread. Because Jesus had just multiplied bread for them. And they ate, they were satisfied. And they said, man, the next day they were looking for Jesus. And Jesus said, hey guys, you're not looking for me because of the word. You're looking for me because you ate and you were full. So they, they began to reason that, man, come, the thing that happened with the children of Israel is happening again. You remember God fed them with manna. Every day God was giving them manna. So we just ate manna yesterday because that's what it was, bread from heaven. Manna, 
you know the real meaning of manna is what is this so it's not a name you understand so so you can actually say that bread that jesus multiplied they could have called it manna also so they're like oh okay let's look for him again today he will give us another one that was what was on their mind because right, man why are we walking man why are we no 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 let's go for this man's crusade at the end of the day he will share bread we'll take home you know we'll be satisfied come on now i mean new way of living and then Jesus said, hey, 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 that bread is not the real thing. And he says, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And like, what are you talking about? Now, this is the same thing with many of God's children. God blesses you just like he did Abraham. He gave Abraham a son. And God says, give me that son. Hey, father, <laughs> hey. For five years, I didn't have a job. <laughs> Lord, like, like, I, I can't know, Lord. Thank you. I think I'm okay with this. I think I'm okay with it. That's what happened to a lot of God's children. See, how can God give me a job and now he's telling me to resign after working for three months or after working for one year or two years, whatever. But God gave me this job. I, I know how this job came. It came by a miracle. It came by the word. Why would God now be telling me to give? Hey, he wants to give you the real thing. You remember that rich young ruler that came to Jesus. He asked Jesus, what must I do that I will inherit life? Because he knew he was rich. Yes. Now, godly riches. He had godly riches. Why? Because he confessed to Jesus that he had kept the law from his youth. And Jesus looked at him and loved him. Jesus could have said, you're a liar. I think I don't know how you made your money. Come on now. He, he was a righteous man. And he had righteous riches. See? But he knew that there was something more. That's why he came to Jesus and said, what must I do? Because he was a student of the scriptures. So what must I do that I may inherit life? And Jesus said, you know the Lord, keep it. I've, I've, I've kept that part. There's something more. And Jesus said, all right. You're lacking something. He said, yeah, tell me. He said, go sell everything you have. Give to the poor and come and follow me. And the guy looked at it and said, ah! Uh-uh. Difficult decision. He walked away sad at what Jesus said. Why? Because he looked at everything he has got. And he felt, man, where am I going to start from? But hey, guess what? Jesus was giving him the principle on how to enter the true riches of God. So why am I telling you this? Every prophecy that God gives to you has two sides. So when you see the beginning of its fulfillment, don't stop there. There is more. Every prophecy that God has given to you, whatever it is, if God promises you you will have a child and now supernaturally you, you, your wife got pregnant or you're the wife, you got pregnant, there is more to that word. There is more to that prophecy. If God said you will build me a house, you know, a lot of pastors have gotten into this place and they are stuck. They had a vision. They saw a vision that they built a big church. And they said, whoa. And then they, 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 they said at it. And then they built the big church. And they are rejoicing in the big church that they have built. Hey, brothers and sisters, that church that God spoke about is beyond the building. It's be you have built the building, yes, but don't set your heart there. Look up for the real building that God spoke about. That's why, you know, David, David looked and says, Lord, I, I really want to build you a house. Look at me. I'm staying in a good place. I want to build you a good place. And God says, hey, David, am I going to stay in a house built by man? Ah, no, no, no. But God says, okay, you can build. But there's a real house I want to dwell in. We know those things. Can you, can you, can you go deeper? Can you go beyond the physical? Can you go beyond the natural? There is more. There is more. There is more. That's why I tell people, you know, of our generation, it's so sad that we have limited ourselves to the Bible. Yeah. It's a hard thing to say, but it's the truth. What has stopped a lot of Christians from fulfilling their calling or fulfilling God's best is their lim the limitation that they have placed with the Bible. The Bible is not the real word of God. 
The word of God is the one that the spirit of God communicates with us. So if we need to receive the word of God, we need to go beyond the Bible. To begin to experience the things that the people who read about in the Bible experience. They had God for themselves. Do you hear God for yourself? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh Lord, our hearts are filled with your truth. We want to fulfill everything, Lord, that you planned for us. Help us, Holy Spirit. Tune our minds. Let us get out of this flesh that holds our minds bound. That we may find full expression in you. Hallelujah. We have asked you to find full expression in us. But now we ask that we will find full expression in you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, oh, my sheep, right? Take in Osakada and Rishtahaya. We bless you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Listen, go before the Lord and let Him have His way with your life. God bless you. I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.